you want this tip of the iceberg slide, which by the way was handcrafted by SlideCow, meaning it is 100% customizable for absolutely free, then please do us a favor. Click on the first link in our description and sign up to our mailing list for tons of updates and exclusive content. Your welcome email to our mailing list will consist of a download link for the slide. Also, if you have Facebook, please go to facebook.com slash slidecow and follow our page. Thanks guys. Welcome back to another video from SlideCow. My name is Yoyo and together we're going to make your slides amusing. This week's video is all about taking it to the next level with your icons on PowerPoint. Can you guess what it is we're going to do? No? Well, what about now? Yep, that's right. We're going to be adding shadow effects to your icons. The reason? Because adding a shadow effect really helps bring them out on your PowerPoint slide. And besides, they look really cool. So let's get into this one. Step one, find your icon and place it in a shape. Okay, so if you go into your insert tab over here and do not see this icons button and you do not know how to bring in your customizable icons onto your PowerPoint slide, then please don't worry. SlideCow has a video to teach you three awesome techniques to bring any icon you'd like on your PowerPoint slide. Just click on the info button on the top right and go watch it now. To save time on this video, I'm going to be using these three icons that you see before you. So, as the step suggests, we're just going to place them all under a shape. So, I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, and I'm going to click on the rounded rectangle option right over here. I'm going to blow one up by holding Shift and dragging it out just like this. And I'm just going to place it just behind. Let's just right click that and send it to back just behind our icons right over here. So, this is going to be somewhat in the middle. This is going to be over there. Perfect. And I'm just going to do the same thing for all of them. So, one over here and one over here. All right, just right click on those, right click and click on send to back. Perfect. Now I'm just going to color them in. So I want to make this one a pinkish color, no outline. This one I'm going to make a orange color without an outline. And this one, this is going to be a light bluish color without an outline. And now I'm just going to make my icons white. So I'm just going to click on this, 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 format, graphics fill, white. Perfect. That is the first step completed. Step two, add the shadow effect. All right, so let's start with the easiest icon. You'll know why it's the easiest icon in just a second. I'm going to click on this icon, hold control, and scroll up with my mouse wheel so I can zoom in. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to go to shapes, and then I'm going to click on this rectangle just over here. And I'm going to draw out a rectangle just next to this icon and making sure it overlaps with the shape just behind it like this. All right. I'm going to click on format, click on shape fill and make it black. And I'm also going to remove the outline and I'm going to send it behind the icon, but just in front of the blue shape that we have. So I'm going to click on send backward until that happens. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to increase the width of this rectangle so it's just in the middle, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, just in the middle of our icon. And I'm also gonna decrease the height of this rectangle so that's in level with the top point of his head and the bottom point of his legs. Okay, so before going any further, I'm just going to make a replica of this icon. You don't need to do this, you just need to pay attention right now. So I'm gonna make this icon just so I can explain my point. We're gonna delete it in just a second. Again, don't do this, you just need to listen right now. Explanation time. We're looking for three things. The first thing we're looking for is the closest point at the top. The second thing we're looking for is the furthest point at the bottom. And the third thing we're looking for are any gaps in between. So with that said, let's just look for those three things. The first thing we're looking for is the closest point at the top. And I'm going to mark that using a circle right over here. Let's just draw that out and change that color into red with no fill. All right. So I'm going to place that just over here. This is where the closest point at the top of the icon is, right? Somewhere over here. It doesn't have to be necessarily over there, but you know that the point is going to fall somewhere around there. The second thing we're looking for is the furthest point at the bottom of the icon. Where is that? 
If you've guessed the left leg, you're absolutely right. So we're looking at the bottom of the left leg right over here. The third thing we're looking for are any gaps in between. And I see a gap in between his head and his body where his neck should be. All right, so now we're going to make the shadow effect using these three points that I've labeled just over here, right? And to do that, you're gonna click on the shape, you're gonna go to format, you're gonna go to edit shape, and you're gonna click on edit points. So let's start with the top point, the top closest point, right? Using the top left corner of the shape, I'm just gonna move it to the right just a bit, just like that. And I'm gonna move the point so it's beneath the icon, not on top, not on, but just beneath. You wanna tuck it just underneath the icon, like this, all right? Now let's move on to the uh, lowest point, but the furthest point as well. So I'm gonna use the bottom left corner of this square and move it just under here. Just underneath, all right? Now I'm gonna take these two corners and bring them downward so it takes over the corner of the shape, just like this. You wanna make sure it takes over one corner, right? And that way you're mimicking a shadow effect just like that. So look at it now, and I've noticed that there's still a bit to go over here with the top right of his head and over here with the bottom left of his leg. So I'm just gonna click on the shape again, go to format, click on edit points, and just play around with that for a bit. So there's one over here, and there's one over here. All right, perfect. Now, what am I gonna do about the gap in between? Well, if you've noticed, the gap over here has my shadow effect slanting to the right. I don't want that, I want it to be straight. So how can I make it straight? I'm gonna go to insert, I'm gonna go to shapes, and then I'm gonna click on the rectangle over here. And over here, I'm just gonna draw just over the slanted shadow that you have over here. And then I'm gonna go to format. I'm going to go to shape fill, make it black, black that you see before, and shape outline, no outline. And then with this small square selected, I'm going to click on the other big shadow effect over here, go to format, merge shapes, union. And then I'm gonna send it to back just like I did before. Perfect, all right, so now you've noticed that we fixed everything. We fixed the top right point, we fixed the bottom left point, and we fixed the gap. We're ready to go now. All right, so with that done, you wanna zoom out, you want to click on the big blue shape over here and the shadow shape over here, hold control and shift together, drag them out so you make exact replicas, and let's delete the icon. You just need these two shapes over here. You wanna click on the shadow effect first, hold control, the shape over here, go to format, go to merge shapes, and then click on intersect. That is the shape you are after. Delete this shape over here and move that into the shape that you see just over here. Send it to back like before. Ta-da! There you go. Now all I have to do is just add the transparency. And to do that, just click on the shape, click on format, Click on shape fill, more fill colors, transparency, 75%. We can now delete this point over here. There you go. That is the shadow effect for the icon that we are looking for. Okay, so before moving on to our next icon, the number one thing you have to keep in mind is consistency. You need to make sure the shadow effect looks similar across the board. You can't make one that's too wide and then another one that's too short and another one that's too narrow, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to make sure that everything is somewhat, not perfectly, but somewhat you know, similar. So let's just play around with this icon over here. So I'm gonna bring in this shadow effect into this icon and I'm gonna send it to back until it's just behind the icon. All right, cool. Now I've noticed something. I've noticed that this icon over here has more than one point at the top and more than one point at the bottom, but the rules still do exist. We're looking for the closest point at the top and the furthest point at the bottom. The closest point at the top is to do with her head just over here, and the furthest point at the bottom is to do with his leg over here. But then we're gonna add one more mechanic to this once I'm done, but I'll show you that in a second. So let's just click on this, click on edit shape, edit points, and let's move these around, right? So I'm gonna move this over here, and then I can delete this point because I don't need it, and to do that you just have to right click on the black square and click on delete point, and delete point, 
delete point again. So I don't need these points, right? So I'm going to move that over there and I'm going to move this just over here. All right, cool. Let's just make sure that everything is perfect. This looks fine, but I'm just going to fine tune it just a bit more. Awesome. All right. Now I've noticed that this guy over here doesn't have that much shadow effect going on for him. We need to give him some love and we're going to make this as easy as possible. So I'm going to click on the shadow effect over here and I'm going to press on control shift and just drag it to the left just like that. And then I'm going to click on format and send to back so that it's just behind the icon, but in front of the pink shape, just like that. All right, cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit shape and edit points and make sure that we're only editing the new shape, right? We're done with the old one, just the new one now. We're going to delete the curve points that you see over here. So we're just going to delete that and we're going to delete this one over here. And we're going to make sure that the bottom right point, the bottom point over here is in line with our shadow effect. So it ensures consistency, right? So one over here and one over there. All right, cool. Now we're going to do the exact same thing we did before, which is move the little points over here to the closest top point and the furthest bottom point. So we're just gonna move that over here. That over here. Cool, all right. Now I'm just gonna click on the two shadow effects, one over here and one over here. Click on format, merge shapes, union. All right, so now it's just one shape, as you can see just over there. So now we have to fix up the gaps. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna click on the shape again. I'm gonna click on format, click on edit shapes, edit points, and I'm just gonna make sure that everything is straight. So for example, I'm going to right click over here and click on add point. And just move that to the center over here. And then I'm just gonna bring that down over here just a bit. So that looks straight to me. And we can do the exact same thing last time, which is just add a square for this one. So I'm gonna do that just now. Click on this, bring that out, highlight that, click on format painter and paint this in, highlight them both. Format, merge shapes, union. Perfect. All right, cool. So then we can just click on the shape at the back click on this shadow shape, oops, click on this shadow shape and hold control, hold shift, bring it downwards and do the exact same thing we did before, which is delete the icon, click on the shadow shape first, click on the uh, pink shape at the back second while holding control, go to format, merge shapes and click on intersect, delete the shadow shape at the back over here, just drag it back up so that's in line and send to back, just like you see over there. Perfect, perfect. I really like that, that looks nice. All right, so let's delete that. All right, cool. So what if we have two icons that make up one icon, like these two cogwheels over here, right? I've noticed that the top point is somewhere around here, and the sorry, the top closest point, and the bottom furthest point is somewhere over here, but there's this huge gap in the middle that I don't want to be taken over for a shadow effect. Instead, I wanna do something like this. I wanna make sure that each one is representative of its own sort of shadow effect, right? And that's actually quite easy to do, so don't worry about that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in this shadow effect over here, the one that we used before, because we wanna make sure that there's consistency, right? We wanna make sure that there is consistency across the board. So I'm gonna click on the shadow effect and go to format, edit shape, edit points. I don't need these three points over here, so I'm just gonna delete them. Right click, delete, right click, delete delete and right click delete. I'm going to move this point over here, not over here. And the reason why is because if I move this point over here, you know, this end of the cog wheel won't be covered by shadow. And I don't want to do that, right? So I want to instead move this point over here. And then I'm going to move the other point over here. I'm going to delete these three points because I don't need them so much. And I can just move this just over there. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, hey, you said something about consistency before. Why aren't you being consistent? Don't worry. 
don't worry, I am being consistent. I'll show you what I mean in just a second, All right? So that's for this cog wheel over here. We're gonna use the same shadow effect that we had for this one, drag it in, do the exact same thing that I did before, which is format, edit points, and let's just delete this, delete this, delete this. Do the exact same thing I did for the last one. But this time, we can create a gap in between the two. Just like that. Because as you can see, we have the exact same shape, right? The exact same shadow effect shape going in within the exact same lines of the uh, of the orange square that you see over here, but it's split in two now, right? And you just wanna make sure that it's, you know, that there's a noticeable gap, but it doesn't look too wide. I think that looks absolutely fine, right? So I wanna make sure that the gaps in the cog wheel are also covered now. So I'm gonna to go to insert shapes and just draw it a circle just like this for both of them, click on the shadow effect, go to home, format painter, click on that, and click on that. And then I'm just gonna hold control and make sure that both my circles are uh, highlighted and both my shadow effects are highlighted, then go to format, merge shapes, union. And then I'm just gonna send it to back and see how it looks. So let's just send this to back. I think that looks absolutely perfect. So then what we're going to do now is we're just going to um, do the same thing that we always do, which is click on the shape, click on, you know, the icon, and the shape, sorry, and the uh, shadow, bring them down over here. We're gonna delete the icon and we are going to click on the shadow effect first, click on the shape second, go to format, go to merge shapes and click on intersect. We're gonna delete the original image over here, just drag that in and make sure that it's aligned perfectly, just like that. And we're gonna send it to back. Whoops. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you add shadow effect to your PowerPoint icons. I know it looks intimidating, but don't worry. It's actually really easy to do once you get the hang of things. Um, you won't struggle that hard, I promise you. All right, guys, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please go to slidecow.com for more tutorials. I'll see you in the next one. Have fun.